Alright. Hi, everybody. Uh, mm. this is the last video game. Yeah. Uh, yeah, welcome back, everyone, to Sweet Simpsons. We just got done and dusted with, uh, Kane and R6. We just had a, uh, as stated, we, uh, just had a, uh, had a sweep, swap, <laughs> restreamers. Uh, so yeah, up next, we're, we're gonna have Celeste by Amber. Um, before that, though, I'd like to acknowledge that Kane, California, has donated 100 bits, and though that is not a direct donation to the Trevor Project, that still goes towards our our three charities that we do support. Um, so if by any chance you're like Kane and you can't actually do a direct donation, then bits or subs will still count towards it. Um, well, that was followed up by a $5, uh, five dollar donation by Fanji. Uh, so thank both of you for the for that. Um, if we are all ready, then once again, you can take it away, Amber. Yeah, I'm ready. Uh, so this game is Celeste. Uh, the goal of it is to climb the mountain. Uh, I'll name the save file. Um, 23, good luck. Alright. So timing will begin when I click begin in the game. So timing will start right now. So this game has a lot of fun, silly movement tech. Uh, the first one that you get to see in the game is right here, where I'm going to be doing all these little small jumps to sort of make Madeline move faster. Uh, this opening section is only 30 seconds, so it doesn't really matter all that long. But... Yeah, timer fading at 29, usually what I like to see. And now we've unlocked a dash. And so what we're gonna do is we have to use a bunch of advanced movement techniques to sort of dash faster around all of these little screens. These are called wave dashes, I believe, or like hyper dashes or something. I don't know. I actually really do not know the movement tech for this game when I really should. You said wave dashes? Uh, that's a term I've heard. Yeah, I think that's what it is. So what I'm basically doing when I do these little dashes is I'm dashing diagonally into the ground and then jumping right upon impact. And that gives me like a little bit of a movement boost, which just helps me basically go from like a normal speed boost to just flying across the screens. So that's the first chapter done. Uh, one thirteen is a chapter time pretty standard uh as you go on the chapters get more and more difficult and throw in a bunch of different mechanics that try to make everything a lot trickier uh soon we have to run from our own shadow Uh, you can sort of go through these things, which is kind of fun. You also get an extra dash for midair when uh, you go through one of them. Uh, which you can sort of use to your advantage, which I, like right there, I used to sort of fly myself up into the little shoot. Whoa! I can't believe I lived through that. That was a series of misinputs that somehow went out 
Okay. So yeah, I'm running from the purple-haired Madeline, uh, and that's essentially my shadow, so it mimics all of my movements. So I have to try to basically not go into the same spot I've already been in twice. And now the shadows are gone. So now it's just relaxed, fun little movement to the end. I feel like this speedrun is definitely like pretty fast paced. I mean, ideally you want it to be for a good time, uh, but everything, like every mechanic of this game is consistent, so there's no real luck involved in it. So as everything moves super fast, uh, the better and better you get at the game, the more you're able to just keep up with everything going so fast. So now we're on yeah. the third chapter. I wanted to I wanted to ask about some dumb questions, but it seems like there's a lot of intense platforming, so uh, I don't want to be here for very long. So the big obstacle for this chapter is going to be those little black and red uh, objects. I think they're called dust bunnies in the lore. Uh, basically, those are you touch them and you die. That, that. I think that's the first step of the run. So. so those are what is going to be a big problem in this chapter. Is one of the rare sections where routing comes into play because you have to go through three different paths to unlock the next area so there's actually like a route you have to follow that's optimal in order to get through here the fastest so we're going to start by going down to the bottom right corner and you're going to see this really cool trick in a second where basically if you bounce off the very corner pixel of any wall even if it has like a deadly object like spikes attached to it you can actually get an extra jump so we're going to use that to sort of skip ahead in this room here instead of doing all the obstacles over there we just jump right up So these sections are where the speedrun gets a lot more complicated just because there's a lot of moving objects and you're trying to 
move your character as fast as possible through them, but everything here is on the same cycle for every single run, so you just learn what works for you. Alright, so that's the cleanup section of this chapter. Now we're into a little transition section before like the climax which will be sort of like a evading an enemy section again so i'm gonna try a big skip right here where basically I'm going to do a crouch dash and try to, like, take advantage of this game's hitboxes to skip through this little wall here. Now, I don't know exactly how this trick works, and I'm not good at it, as you can tell. I'm making Vapo very upset, I imagine. Yeah, it's just Vapo's, Vapo's in his bed, just like so, so pissed off. Yeah, at one point I was really struggling with that trick because my strategy is to just kind of do the movement and hope I get through. Now there's like a specific setup that works all the time, and Vapo told me how to do it, uh, and I just didn't ever bother to learn it. So now we have this giant head that attacks us in cycles. So now we just have to kind of get the pattern down to know when it's going to strike. Ugh. Can't believe I survived that. Okay, yeah, I really messed myself up in that room. Took that a lot slower than I wanted to. Ugh. Yep, messed that up. So yeah, the big skip definitely messed with things here. I lost a lot of time to that. And then sloppy escape at the end. Yeah, that came out to like a 614. I want like a 545 in that chapter. Ugh. Nine death. Rough. Now that section is like the first real big difficulty escalation. Now this chapter is not easy, but it's definitely a bit of a break compared to... Uh, chapter 3, where the big mechanic of this chapter will be these cool little clouds you'll get to see in a second. Uh, and then wind, as you can see there. Oh, and then there's these orbs. Here's a cool little room. I love doing this, going under the spikes there. Just very lightly tapping jump the second I collect the item I need to open the door. And there's that little corner jump again at play. Here's a big skip across this room. Not fun when this goes wrong, because it's just stupid time loss. I've been really struggling with this screen lately. Nope, not today. Usually miss that jump.
that room right there that I just did is usually like my least favorite in this chapter, so I'm really happy to be past that. So these are moving blocks. Uh, you just grab them and they go in the direction that the arrow indicates. And then the ones with the little switches at the top, you can actually get on top and control the direction and movement. Just cool. And now we're in the final stretch of this chapter. Uh, now they start throwing snowballs at us, which is kind of impolite, because uh, it makes the screens a lot harder. And that is chapter four done. In three, three and a half minutes. That's actually a really good IL time for me. I'm usually getting like 340, 345, 350. All right, now we're on to chapter five. In chapter five, we're gonna do something a little bit different. So, in this game, there are these things called B-sides, which is basically, like, extra content that's completely optional. Uh, it's basically, like, hard mode for a lot of these chapters. Uh, now, they're optional for, like, a normal playthrough of the game. But if you do them, you can still progress further in the game. So, for this chapter, it's actually faster to detour and go grab the b-side tape and then just do the full b-side then it is just regularly do the chapter so uh, we're gonna do the b-side hmm. the very little slus viewing experience i've had is just watching people struggle with these b-sides so that makes a lot more sense the tape so now what we're gonna do is we back out to the map we have the tape unlocked and now we switch to the b-side tape so now here is celeste hard mode with new music So I'm going to try another big skip here, though I'm not good at it, so I don't anticipate making it. But it saves about 30 seconds if you pull it off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to climb up to this next screen and... Oh, I did it. Okay. So yeah, I want to fall down there and then reset my character, which puts me at the end of that room. Uh, and then just saves me 30 seconds of getting there normally.
Now, I've already made it pretty clear that I'm like a very uninformed speedrunner in this game. So I don't know the exact mechanics of how that trick I just did works. I just know that if I mash buttons, uh, the thing can happen. All right, now time for the giant precision falling room. Okay, we're good. Now here are these monsters. I think they're called Seekers. Uh, they just aim at you and then charge. Uh, Good thing is if you stomp on their heads, you get your little dash reboosted or recharged so you can boost again. Oh, I did not do that right. And now here is Theo. Theo is locked in a little glass thing. It's one of the side characters in the story. Um, and we can't advance to the next rooms unless we have Theo. So we have to navigate Theo through these monster infested rooms. Uh oh. Okay. There we go. Thankfully, the monsters are now done, so now we just use uh, Theo as a projectile. And then every B-side ends with a um, rhythm-based room. So 3.37 is actually a really solid B-side time for me. I'm actually really happy with that. How many deaths was that? Okay, so that's really two deaths, because one of those deaths comes from, like, doing the skip. Okay, so we're on to Chapter 6 now, and Chapter 6 has a lot of new mechanics, like these flying feathers. Uh, those are simple, you just fly into the- you go into the feather and then you can fly for a couple seconds. They also have these little blocks where if you hit one of the faces of it, it travels in that direction. You get some cool stuff here. Like, this room's sort supposed to be sort of a puzzle of how to navigate it, but you can actually just do this. Get through it really quickly. Here's a cool little jump here. I'm gonna use a lot of momentum. Fly right into that feather. Such a fun little precision move. I even did it really slowly there. I, you can do it a lot faster than that. But it feels so nice when you actually do it. Whoops. And feather. And then you get these things. You can just bounce off of them. They give you a lot of momentum. Here's a big momentum jump. 
just fly across the room. I think I was going to make it through that. Oh. Okay, I was... a little low. Oh, I almost just shot myself off the screen there. That would have been bad. Here's a fun little screen that has precision falling. That one's not hard because you can use uh, the wall as a guide. That one's trickier because you have to like actually aim for the holes and the spikes. Now we get into the actual action of this chapter. We're gonna launch from this thing into the next screen. And now here is Badalyn, uh shooting projectiles at us. There's two attacks, there's those little spheres. And then there's another one that's sort of just like a big red beam. Like that. So these screens are just kind of a lot of trial and error goes into them. Just knowing which attack happens on each screen, what's the best place to go to avoid each attack, what happens each time you hit Badalyn, because every time you hit there's new props that drop. One thing you t take advantage of in this section is just for a couple frames after, like, the attack is, like, formally sent out by Badalyn, you can actually avoid taking any damage and dying from it. Uh, which can make for some really close calls, but it's actually to your benefit. Oh, it's been a while since I've had that happen. Not entirely sure what I did there. Like right there, I waited a little bit just because I know usually I cut it really close to getting hit by the attack if I don't wait a second for that next cycle.
And then that's the end of the fighting. And now we just climb. Now the big thing is normally throughout the game, you only get like one dash per, like, each time you leave the ground. But now you get two. So that's just going to be the mechanic going into the final chapter here, chapter seven. Three deaths there. So chapter seven is the final chapter. It's the most difficult chapter and it's also the longest chapter. Um, every section is like a sort of like medley of all the first six chapters. Like this is meant to be like a remix of um, chapter six. And then after this, we'll go to a remix of chapter one. And then these green things, you've seen them all throughout the game. Those just refill your stamina for the dashes. All right. So, <clears throat> yeah, this reflects the first chapter we saw all the way back a whole, like, 25 minutes ago. to come down and then we'll just jump up into the purple one shoot up all right now here's uh reflecting on chapter two you get these little things where, that you can dash through you get some fun movement throughout this chapter with them like here's a cool diagonal dash and then up Here is my least favorite part of this enti entire chapter. It is the chapter three inspired section. Uh, while everything in this game is on the same cycle every run, I find this chapter, or this area, to be the least forgiving. And it's my least optimized, just because I don't like taking risks in this section. Like, right there, I could have probably made it through one or two cycles faster. Those dust bunnies, but I just didn't. Just played it safe. Okay. We're through that, and I think we didn't die at all. So now this is chapter four inspired.
So we're gonna do a big launch across this entire screen here. Look at that. That's a fun skip. I love doing that one. I'm always really worried for it, and then I very rarely will ever mess it up. The last run that I did before this marathon, though, I did mess it up. Now, here's a weird little room. Bunch of little skips. And now we are into the Chapter 5 Inspired section. Now here is a cool little skip. Oops, I messed it up. Oh, I messed it up again. There you go. Do the corner trick again. And then you just beat up that. Normally you have to go down and do a bunch of other stuff and avoid a bunch of other objects to shoot up into that area from an orb. But uh, you can just do that. I learned how to do that trick back there. Uh, from watching Duck Bob's PB, so thank you, Duck Bob. Here's a so this room you're supposed to hit those buttons. Oh. Uh, to get through, uh, you don't in the speed run. You can actually go under them, though I messed it up there. Um, I'm sorry, real quick. I'd like to uh, say uh, thank you, G-Tops, for the uh, $20 donated. That brings our uh, total to $195 out of our goal for this uh, marathon of 330 uh, So yeah, thanks again for that, and uh, carry on. Alright, this is the last screen of the Chapter 6 section. That section did not go well. And now we are onto the final stretch. Final 30 checkpoints. Oh. I'm sorry. We got another huge donation from Tilbert. A $50 donation. Wow. That brings our total to 245 out of 330 raised. Wow. Uh, thanks again to both of you. Wow, we are... We have made such progress. <laughs> and, like, it was stalled at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 for so long. So to see it, like, now is, is crazy. Thanks to both of you. And once again, carry on. Yeah, thank you, Dtops and Tober. Wow. Chances are, uh, actually, he's gonna have to get a fossil league world record. Yeah. Oh. Go.
So we're at the final 10 checkpoints, so we're really in the home stretch now. Final five checkpoints. Let's go. So as we get closer to the end, there's gonna just be a combination of all the mechanics. There's gonna be the clouds, the feathers, you name it. This last checkpoint is just avoid the deadly objects and platform well. And time. Uh, let me see. So that was a 37 46. Uh, 46, yeah. let's go. Uh, GG. Uh, so yeah, about a minute twenty on PB. Not bad. Let's see this pie. Yeah, this Let's lackluster go. pie. The worst pie Two ever made. Berries. Two red berries. That's a uh, hundred seventy-three less berries than the last time I did Celeste at Sharcom. Uh, yeah, that run was alright. Uh, some low moments, but some other really good moments. But, uh, that is Celeste. Uh, alright then. Uh, it's alright. Thank you, everyone, oh. for the GGs. So, uh, yeah, we are basically, uh, I think we're gonna, I think we're waiting on Kaith, uh, but, uh, but yeah, uh, besides that, though, uh, we are on time, it seems, which is a miracle, given how earlier we were, like, nearly 45 minutes behind schedule. Uh, so yeah, I guess we'll just, uh, I will sign off as host, uh, and, uh, yeah. Uh, see you in a bit for, uh, I believe, I don't know how to pronounce this, but Bacon's doing it, so, uh, look forward yeah. to that a bit. Should be a fun run. Exactly. <laughs>